What would you do if you were gifted a live animal for your Thanksgiving meal? Would you cook a feast or would you adopt it into your family? What if that animal wasn't a turkey, but it was a raccoon? Here's what President Coolidge did when faced with that very situation. I'm Bob Summers, and this is a presidential story. Since at least the 1870s and maybe earlier, turkeys have been the traditional Thanksgiving meal at the White House. Starting in 1873, the, quote, poultry king of Rhode Island, Horace Voss, donated turkeys to the White House every Thanksgiving and Christmas, and did so for the next 40 years until his death in 1913. After Voss's death, many people would send live animals to the White House with the hope they would be the next White House holiday meal supplier. The Coolidges were known as animal lovers. Friends and supporters would send them cats and dogs as gifts, or sometimes something more exotic. Some would be sent to a zoo, others would stay at the White House, which soon became known as the Pennsylvania Avenue Zoo. In 1923, with all the animals, pets and food alike, being sent, Finally, President Coolidge had enough. Please stop sending me these animals. I don't have anywhere to keep them. Well, that didn't help. Would you like some lion cubs? How about a pygmy hippo? You look like you need a bear. In 1926, Vinnie Joyce of Nittayuma, Mississippi, sent a raccoon, hoping that raccoons would eventually replace turkeys as the traditional Thanksgiving meal. President Coolidge had never eaten raccoon before and had no interest in trying it, and Mrs. Coolidge fell in love with Rebecca, as she would be called. They welcomed Rebecca to their family, and she soon became their favorite pet. For Christmas that year, Rebecca received her own bejeweled collar that read, Rebecca, White House Raccoon. But on the other hand, it was a strange Christmas in the Coolidge house that year. The Coolidge's son, John, home from college, received as a gift a fashionable for the time fur coat made of raccoon. Life at the White House was good to Rebecca, White House chefs would prepare shrimp, persimmons, and eggs for her. She would sit in the bath and play with a bar of soap for hours. And they built a treehouse for her on the White House grounds just outside of the President's office. President Coolidge would walk Rebecca on a leash or have her sit on his lap. But Rebecca was a wild animal. She would destroy furniture and clothes. She would unpot plants and unscrewed light bulbs and jar lids. And although it was never confirmed, one day after spending time with Rebecca, President Coolidge appeared with a bandaged hand after presumably being bit. Perhaps Rebecca needed a raccoon friend to tame her destructive nature. Enter Reuben. Captured by a Washington police officer one night, Reuben was soon introduced to Rebecca. Rebecca, wasn't very interested at all. Eventually, and not surprisingly, Reuben made the great escape from the White House grounds and was never seen again. When Coolidge left the White House in 1929, they donated Rebecca to the zoological quarters in Rock Creek Park, now the National Zoo. There she lived out the rest of her days. When the Hoovers followed the Coolidges into the White House, Rebecca's treehouse was still there. Being a warm and cozy place to crash, eventually a local opossum moved in. The Hoovers adopted him and named him Billy Possum, but he never reached the high levels of fame attained by Rebecca. Raccoon never took off as a dinner table staple, 
And if you ever have the opportunity to live in the White House, you will not be able to adopt your own raccoon. It is now illegal to own a raccoon within the District of Columbia. And that's how President Coolidge handled a gifted raccoon. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to hear more presidential stories. And please visit POTUS.com to learn more interesting facts about the presidents.